Mr. Whitley. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, this morning, I expect uh, to be referring to uh, our factum and also the respondent's condensed book, which was passed up this morning. Uh, Firstly, as I did at the outset of the last Cotter Appeal, I thought I would begin by providing the Court with an update as to the current status of the proceedings which are going on in both the United States and in Cuba. And uh, firstly, uh, perhaps I could advise you with respect to the habeas corpus application, which was referred to my, by my friend a moment ago. And if you look at tab one of our condensed book, we have an order from Mr. Cotter's habeas corpus judge, uh, Judge John Bates of the U.S. District Court for the District of D.C. And this is something we probably should have put in our book of authorities but neglected to. Uh, as this order indicates, that habeas proceeding has been stayed. So it is not advancing at the present time. And as you can see from the terms of this order, it has essentially been stayed pending the outcome of the military commission prosecution and also the appeals that would follow such a prosecution. So it's suspended rather than stayed? Well, the word in the order is stayed. I suppose you could say it's suspended. But in any event, Mr. Cotter is not able to advance that application at the present time because of the existence of the prosecution. Now, what happened after that is the prosecution was moving ahead, more or less, when we received the executive order from President Obama, which is at tab three of our condensed book. Uh, this was signed just a couple days after President Obama's inauguration. And there's a number of things in this order to note. Um, firstly, if you look on page five, and that's referring to our own numbering in the top corner uh, of all these pages, you'll see President Obama ordered that Guantanamo shall be closed by one year from the date of this order, which would be January 22nd, 2010. And uh, the remainder of this executive order essentially uh, initiates a review process to review all of the detainees in Guantanamo, including Mr. Cotter, to decide uh, what is going to be done with each and every one of them, essentially. Options include a prosecution in the federal courts in the United States or a continued military commission prosecution or release or repatriation, various other options. If you look at Section 5, which is on page 7, you'll note that part of this process involves diplomatic efforts, that is, negotiations with foreign countries to try to resettle many of the detainees in Guantanamo. We don't know whether the U.S. considers that to be an appropriate disposition for Mr. Cotter, whether the Canadian government has had any specific negotiations on that point. But we think it's important that this is a very important feature of the Guantanamo Bay detention system. And that's why we think the particular remedy that we have sought is just and appropriate in this case. Diplomatic negotiations is a very important part of this unique process uh, as the United States government attempts to close Guantanamo Bay. I would note that it appears to be widely accepted at this point in time that there is no way that they're going to meet this January 22nd deadline. So we were, of course, hopeful that things would be settled by that point in time. That now appears highly unlikely. Then finally, um, as you'll see in Section 7, another thing that this executive order did was it brought a halt to all the military commission prosecutions, including Mr. Cotter's. So Mr. Cotter has a stay of his habeas proceeding pending the disposition of his military commission prosecution. And then the military commission prosecution gets indefinitely stayed by this order. So Mr. Cotter is still complete with, completely without any type of legal process, either through the habeas courts or the actual trial. Does your position depend on whether or not there is, in fact, a process that takes place? Or is it your argument that notwithstanding whether there will be proceedings, you're still seeking a remedy? Of course, yeah. It, it doesn't depend on that. Uh, we think this is a very important factor for you to be aware of. Um, I understand it's my obligation to provide you with an update of the status of, of the foreign proceedings. But um, certainly it is our position that seven, beyond seven years with no process is a very important factor for this court to consider at various stages of the analysis of this case, notably Section 24.1, but also Section 7, for example. 
Um, quickly then, because uh, we've so just your uh, your client at the present time is in a kind of limbo with no recourse to uh, uh, no sort of any legal legal recourse. He is in limbo, sir, and he has been in limbo for well over seven years now. Yeah. Um, now, where we're at now um, is reflected in the declaration you'll see at tab two of our condensed book. This is a declaration that was filed in several commissions cases in addition to Mr. Cotter's. And this is a declaration which was filed in support of the most recent continuance or adjournment request for that commission prosecution. So every so often we come back before the commission and there's been, I believe this is the third continuance since the executive order. You'll see at paragraph three that there is a self-imposed deadline of 60 days from September 17th, 2009 to decide what's going to be done with Mr. Cotter. And it was imposed pursuant to this declaration. By our count, that expires on Monday. And just sitting here today, uh, we, we happen to be online and we've read a news report that apparently within one hour, it will be announced that Mr. Cotter's military commission prosecution is going to continue. So that apparently has been the decision that has been uh, rendered in relation to his case. We've just heard about it uh, moments ago. It's not official yet, but we expect that the military commission uh, prosecution is going to be put back on track somehow and, uh, and kick started again. And uh, we don't obviously understand what schedule might accompany that, uh, that prosecution, but uh, apparently that's what's going to happen. Another, uh, a number of other Guantanamo detainees are apparently being transferred to um, New York, notably the 9-11, um, um, the persons accused in the 9-11 prosecution will be going to New York. Mr. Cotter apparently is not going to be leaving Guantanamo, it seems. So turning then to the actual uh, merits of our argument in this appeal, uh, I would like to emphasize a few points from our statement of facts uh, just before turning to the argument uh, itself. Um, you'll see that at tab four, we've reproduced a report from the Security Intelligence Review Committee of Canada. Uh, this is a report uh, pertaining specifically to CSIS's interviews of Mr. Cotter in Guantanamo. We did not have this report in the courts below. It's quite recent. Um, and what is being said in this report is not something new. Uh, 